chapter. I'm going to speak tonight on the seven angels having the seven last plagues. Revelation 15. I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. I saw as it were a sea of glass mixed with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark, over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having the hearts of God. And they sang the song of Moses, the service of God. And the song of the Lamb saying, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, you King of saints. We shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you only are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you. For your judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was open. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in purple and white and linen, having the breastplates girded with gold girdles. And one of the four beasts, or four living creatures, gave unto the seven angels seven gold vials full of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from His power no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. God we thank You Hide this word in my heart. Cleanse me by the blood. Wash me. Give us the washing and the purging we need. Also, Lord, create in me a clean heart and a right spirit. Hide your word in me that I'll not sin. Give us the self-denial, the mortifying that we need in our flesh. Help us to take up the cross. Walk after you. And I need the wisdom and the inspiration of the Almighty to speak by divine revelation. Give us utterance in the unction of your spirit. Amen. Now I'm going to speak on the seven angels having the seven last plagues. Before I do, I want to make a few comments here on a few scriptures. I want you to notice here verse 2. I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled and mixed with fire. Them that have gotten the victory over the beast and his image and over his mark and over the number of his name standing on the sea of glass having the hearts of God. You notice John after there was a pause between the sixth and the seventh seal and the servants of God that served day and night were sealed by the sealing of the angel from the rising of the sun that in each phase 
of God's wrath, He always gives a hope for the overcomer, for the faithful. I believe right now, more than anything else, people ought to seek a faithful spirit. You ought to want to be faithful more than anything else. It's going to prove out being faithful. That's day in and day out. Never failing. Never getting weary. They have gotten the victory. So you know that everybody tells you nobody can live in such a thing. But God is going to have a people that's going to have the victory. Paul said, thanks be unto God that give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you notice here, that overcome is the beast, his image, his mark, his name. And they stood. You notice here in verse 1, I saw another sign in heaven Great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is sealed up the wrath of God. And I saw the word sealed glass, mingled, mixed with fire, and them that had gotten the victory, standing on the sealed glass, having the hearts of God. And they sang the songs of Moses, the servant of God. How many remember the songs of Moses? And I'm the Lamb. You know, when Moses and them come out of Egypt, and they cross the Red Sea, and God gave victory. John is lining up the book of Revelation according to Egypt. Talk about it. All prophets always you'll find that when it, when God's people was failing the commandments and or people that was being encouraged to keep the commandments and to obey God, God would always warn them. He would use other nations. He'd always use Egypt. You know why? Four hundred years they lived in Egypt. They had been slaves. Slaves. They served the Egyptians. Died in gravel pits. Died, died lifting them stones to build in pyramids. Many of them got crushed. And all they do is drag them out and get another. No mercy whatsoever. The taskmasters. Out there, them slaves. Under the heat of the day, that's the reason God said, remember, when John said, there'd be no heat to be out there working like slaves. Many of God's people were slaves. And they died in the heat and they never gave them a shade, never give them a rest. Beat them if it didn't work. Beat them to the drop dead. That's why God, you'll find later here, is going to cause heat to pay them back. He's going to pay back for everything they've done to God's people at any time before we get through these plagues tonight. The song of Moses means victory. It means we're coming through, we're coming out. King James Greek said, these are they that have come out of tribulation. Have me be on the other side of it. Sing the songs of Moses and the songs of Lamb saying, Great and marvelous are your works. Lord God Almighty, just and true, your ways, you King of saints. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name, for you are only holy. For all nations shall come. Even here, John has given us another glimpse 
into the thousand years. See, I told you this morning, it was in the middle of the book, and it wasn't over. There was no pre mid checking away. There was no mid checking away, no pre checking away. And the resurrection will only happen. We'll prove that in the morning when the time comes for us to reign. And some of you scared you're going to miss it. Don't worry about it. Be faithful unto death. Because you that are dead, that died faithful, died in obedience, died keeping the commandments, died with your faith, you're going to be like Paul. That is laid up for me this righteous reign, this righteous crown. I'm going to have a crown. I'm going to be a king too. And what's good about tomorrow morning's message, I'm going to show you tomorrow morning that the poorest of men are going to be like, going to be king. If they're faithful. A little old nobody slave, hallelujah, is going to be kings in that world to come. In that great thousand years reign, when Jesus spoke of the world to come, he was talking about it. It's going to be like a new world. All order is going to change. Thank you, Jesus. So here, John was giving us a little preview of the reign of nations that's going to come. Ain't going to have no choice. That one's going to be bound. And the seven, and after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of testimony of heaven was opened, and the seven angels came out of the temple. Having the seven legs closed and purple and white, pure and white and linen. Having the breastplate skirted with a gold girdle. One of the four living creatures gave under the seven, this is one of them, gave under the seven angels seven bowls, gold bowls, full, full. Man, right now we're fixing to see the climax of the wrath of God on the earth. These are the last plagues. This is the climax of God's wrath. I mean, this is a, we're getting even yet closer to what I speak about this morning. I told you this morning, the thousand years was in sight in the middle of Revelation, now it's even closer. Full. Full. Of the wrath of God who lives forever and ever. And they had to come out of the temple because the glory of the Lord they had to come out of heaven. They had to come out of the temple in heaven because the glory of the Lord was fixing to fill the temple because at last God is going to pay back and get His full comments of revenge upon the wicked. What the seven seals The four horsemen and the sixth seal then bring down in judgment what the seven trumps, especially the fifth and the sixth, of course, didn't destroy and didn't revenge. What escaped? You notice what I read? Will they repent not? They still worship devils. Still wouldn't repent. Well, God said, oh boy, I've got something worse for you. Okay, you didn't repent on that one. You know, every time God increased in 
Each time Moses stood before Pharaoh, God hardened his heart because he knew Pharaoh was mild and repentant. He was without mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they should obtain mercy. He that's without mercy is going to be in bad shape. You better be showing mercy one day, man. But you don't need it. Now, some of you are not reverence, and I feel a, not a, a, in reverence. You better be still and know God. The seven angels is going to come out of the temple, and God has let the glory, the smoke, the same glory that was in the presence. the temple, the Chicago, the glory of God, and nobody could go back in. So these angels had finished pouring out the climax before wrath upon the earth. You know, each time Moses increased, God increased his wrath against Pharaoh. You notice know it? The frogs, the lice, the hell, the heat, the dust, the blood, the water done in the blood, the sun down in dark, he still hardened his heart. But when God brought the dead angel to Egypt, only the blood covenant God made with Abraham that Moses was still carrying out. Well, only the blood covenant. God made a blood covenant with Abraham, and all from Abraham has always shared out that covenant. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Me, you are the seed of Abraham, and we better clean Jesus as our blood covenant. And Jesus' is wrist, you know, you always got a wrist to make Jesus' wrist. The action is the nails in here. In Jesus Christ and keeping his commandments is going to help you now. Now you will fear God and keep his commandments or you will be destroyed for one of these evil plagues. Somebody said, you better be careful. You, know, you better be careful. I am dealing with this with care. Man with all godly fear, I'm opening up these scriptures. You're the one that better be careful. God said if I add to it, He's going to add the plagues. I'm not adding to this. I'm giving you the exact number. I'm giving you the exact word. And God ain't going to add nothing on me. But you know what? If you don't hear, you know what God told me? If you don't hear me, if you don't hear my word, if you step out like a dumb dumb, God told me these plagues, He's going to be added to you. He's going to add the plagues to this book. Bible said, they repented not of these plagues. This demonic army led by these four angels of 200 million for demonic plagues. Look right here. Take it down the scriptures. The rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues. See, they were plagues. I didn't see nothing. Well, bless God, you may not have seen nothing, but you sure seen the dead. How do you think you got to see a horse with a rider on it? Then you got to see a horse with a rider on it for there to be a demon out there. You don't always see angels, but angels are always in camp about them to pure hell. You don't always see them. Hallelujah! But they're always there. Hallelujah! If you pure God and keep His commandments. But you sure seen the plagues. Man, these plagues. You seen the plagues. You knew that the army had been loose because the plagues. The result. And I'm not expecting to see 200 million people riding on horses. But I guarantee you one thing. These angels are going to lead these plagues. 
beatings. This is going to be like germ warfare. God is going to turn loose evil diseases, plagues, and passions. Jesus Himself said that be passions, plagues, passions, fearful sights, great sights, men, sin, beasts, plagues coming on. The hearts are filled. God heard that. Seeing what's coming over there. So it said, the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, repenting not of the works of their hand, that they should not worship devils, and idols, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor what people worship their homes or cars that worship all this stuff. This is a generation of worship on what you got. People get up and you hear them testify. God give me this home. God give me that. But who is saying, God give me the blood of Jesus. God wash me. God save me. God cleanse me. God deliver me. I was an old wreck sinner. That's the only kind of miracles they talk about. I'm sick. He repented of their murder, of their sorcery, of their fornication. Today, people don't think about going to bed with a man or woman. They don't think about running around lusting after a man. A girl don't think about lusting after a boy, running after him. Man don't think about running after a woman, lusting after him with his eyes, with his heart. You ain't love, you ain't lust. Better get on here. I'm getting off the subject again. But I'm just telling you why. God said, okay, go ahead and don't repent. I got something else worse. I got seven times more worse plagues. Now you will repent. Let's go to 16. I sit here and read 16. I got to do some reading, y'all. Y'all bear with me. I heard a great voice speaking out of the temple saying to the angels, go your way, pour out the by the bowl of wrath upon the earth. Now, the climax. All these going at the same time. Can you imagine? Seven angels with seven bowls full of the rest of God's wrath. Seven times more worse than 49,000 times more worse than what went to Egypt. Can you imagine? And not just in Egypt, see. Not just in Texas, but upon the whole earth. Because it's the whole earth is worshiping idolatry. It's the whole earth is worshiping witchcraft. It's the whole earth is committing adultery. It's the whole earth is stealing. It's the whole America that's on drugs about it. We consume 65% of the world's drugs. More marriages and divorce. And now, young people ain't getting married no more. They're living with them. Ain't it? Living with them. Live it on. They got the guts to take the responsibility of a husband or a wife that they want the pleasure of sex. God said if you want the pleasure of sex, man. But it's not just for the sex. Man. Well, I'm off subject to man. I'm telling you, man, I listen. The earth. And the first angel went out and poured his bowl upon the earth. There fell a noisome and grievous sores upon men which had the mark of the beast upon them which worship his image. That's the false church today. The false church has already got the spirit of the beast. Don't believe me. This whole church world is the spirit of the beast. And you're going to see the whole church fall. They call it a false rapture. The rapture theory is false. Jesus said, Beware of false prophets, false doctrine. They like the worst false doctrine there in the universe. Here's the false, the rapture theory. Whether it's before or middle, it's still dangerous. There ain't going to be no catching up, no hand going up there, no sin. Big supper. What what purpose is it while God's destroying the earth for us to go up there and have a big pie supper? It ain't even significant. It ain't even real. 
have an ice cream party while the rest of the Christians are going through hell down here. God take one of his wives up there and the other bride of Christ. There's a bride in Revelation that's going through hell to get ready, making her clothes, making her garments right, getting every sin out of her life, getting the spots out of her life, and then some bride, some crazy doctrine that ain't even the Scriptures. In the marriage supper, when they make that no hand, said you eat the, the flesh and meat, king, so you ain't going to be eating people. That's spiritual. The marriage supper of the Lamb is spiritual. It says you eat the flesh of kings. You're going to be eating the flesh of human beings. And you the bride. He's talking about that God's going to bring in the millennium. The king is going to come and set at your feet. And they're going to serve you now. That's what he's talking about. I'll prove this to you tomorrow. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah, but now I'm trying to get you a wife. We're fixing to see hell on Because I'm sure you need me if you're a commandment keeper. The commandments of God and faith in Jesus keep you from the plagues. A thousand have died to side, ten thousand to left side, no more some presses. That's them right here. Let me read that in Psalm 91. Well, you got it last time, but you forgot it before you got it. Hallelujah. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. There are no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, Nor for the pestilence that walk in the dark, nor the destruction that waste at, wait at noon. See what's kept. Surely he shall deliver you from all the snares of the clouds from the north. Some trouble what here? What is our town? Same word. Awesome. Horrible. Pestilence. Grievous. So upon men which had the mark of the beast, upon them which worship his image. See, these ain't going to come one time. All seven of these has been ordered. You can't get back in the temple. Go and fulfill this commission. What the rest of what the climax of my wrath upon the earth. And so, here goes the second one. The second one poured out his bowl of wrath upon the sea. And it became the blood of a dead man. And every living creature died in the sea. Before you see, a third was being destroyed. But now, not just a, a third. What are we going to do for salmon? <laughs> What you going to love the eaters going to do? What you, your, your red crab eaters going to do? Red lobsters going to be in trouble. Slug! Man, they're not going to go on and make money. And it's going to happen. You may not see the angel, but you'll see and hear the news. Fish. Everything in the sea dies. Exodus 7, 17 to 21. I believe I've already read this before, but in case, we'll add it. Thus said the Lord, in this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite you with a rod that is in your hand upon the waters which are in the rivers, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that is in the river shall die, and the rivers shall stink, and the Egyptians shall not desire to drink 
of the water of the river. I did read that the other night, but there it is again. So, God, and it was blood. You can spiritualize this if you want to now. If it was blood in Egypt, it's blood here. And you people that want to spiritualize this book, woe be unto you. And I don't see nothing spiritual about this. I am seeing the angel went through the streets and killed the firstborn. Cattle. Hell got on them. Night got on them. Frogs, locusts come on them. Well, that's the way I'm interpreting revelation. As it is, that's what God told me. He said the word is just about explainable itself. A lot of prayer and wisdom. And faith in your heart that you believe what you preach. So man, that's the second angel. The third angel. See, they're coming all together. Poured out his bowl up on the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. Two angels of the blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Oh, you righteous. Oh, God, oh you are righteous, O oh Lord, which are was and shall be because you have judged this. They have shed the blood of saints, prophets, to put David down, down, to cut James' throat, to cut Paul hell. to kill West. Well, that's what it's going to be. Man, at this time, the beast is going to be slaughtered. Millions of Christians. And some of you are going to die. Don't worry about it. He said in Revelation, my message in the morning, I'm going to show you, be faithful to death, or you'll be in that first resurrection. Be faithful unto death. I'll give you a crown of righteousness, and you're a real king. And who wants to be a king? Be faithful to death. You'll be a king. Die for Jesus. You know why they wouldn't accept deliverance? They wanted to be in that first resurrection. Hallelujah. They have shed the blood of saints, prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. The, the man of God, that God has said, the ones that you talk about are worthy for you to drink blood. Because you shed their blood. Now drink blood. And I heard another out of the altar, even, another out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteousness are your judgments. Everybody's praising Him. Everybody in heaven is praising Him. Heaven is sanctioning Him. All these modern preachers are saying, God don't do this. You better get into God. God is a killer God. I read the day of the Bible where the Bible says God is a God of war. The Lord is a God of war. Get ready, like it. They've always talked about me because I'm judgment. Doom. Well, this is doom, man. You can't get it right. Somebody said, can we do anything? Uh-uh. Because it's done in prophesy. Ain't nothing you can do but get right. Dig out the commandments, start keeping them. Bless the day that walk out of his commandments and keep them. Blessed, blessed are you. There's a blessing for the commandment keepers. Don't miss Saturday morning service. I'm going to deal with all this Saturday morning. The commandment keepers. In Revelation. My Lord. And the fourth angel poured out his bowl of wrath upon the sun. Power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. You know, John had this in mind when he said, God spoke 
to the men that were sealed by the seal of God, now the sun can't strike you no more. You're going to be kept through when the sun gets so hot. Now when you can't get water, you ain't going to get thirst because I'm going to plague the water. They ain't going to drink blood, but you ain't going to worry about it, sealed saints. Faithful, sealed of God. Hallelujah. And but now, you're going to find out in the morning, we have already have come in into mortality because a thousand years is within sight and we're coming right into immortality. We're going to put off the earth and if you don't agree, I don't care. I'm going to prove it to you. I'll prove it to you today, but I'm going to prove it to you twice in the morning. Hallelujah, because flesh and blood cannot inherit this kingdom. He ain't talking about the kingdom of the Holy Ghost. He's talking about the kingdom of the millennium. And you're going to have to put off the earth. And we're going to put on the heaven. We bore the earth. And now but in this world, we're going to bear by the heaven. But this time in Revelations, we will have already have tasted that Jesus has abolished it. And brought life and mortality to light to us through the gospel. And the devil can't kill us for these things. Hallelujah! Glory! I said, Glory! Hear my word. Take off. Hear my word in the morning. And get all my tapes on this. And men pour out his. Bold right from the sun, power was given to him to scorch men with fire. Men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God which had power over these plagues. They repented not to give him glory. It's all right. I've done got my, my kids, my servant. The servants of God, listen. Therefore, therefore are they before the throne of God, get, serving Him day and night in His temple. He that sits on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sunlight. And this word light here from the Greek means strike up them any more, nor any heat. Thank God. And the dead angel. God said, I ain't through yet. The fifth angel poured out his bowl upon the seat of the beast. You notice what happened on the fifth seal? The saints were persecuted. At the time that John wrote that seal, already millions had given their lives. But then they were praying in the altars. You get that when you get that tape, you'll understand that. Praying in the altars. Fine. How long will it be that you revenge our blood? He said, when you're fellow servants. You can't be a mortal unless you're a servant. You'll quit God. You'll deny God. If any man follow me, let him serve me. That's why we need to be cross tapes. You know, I taught a great cross message this morning. Seven hours. God then was getting us ready. But some of y'all didn't get the tape. Some of y'all don't know what I taught about the blood. You don't know what I taught about the cross. You don't know what I taught about fasting and praying. You don't know what I taught about living sacrifices because you're way out there. You're good people. But you don't know what serving God is all about. You think serving God is going to church, blowing to church, praying to guys. That's just part of the serving day and night. you got to get out yourself. And the fifth thing to put out, you notice the fifth trumpet tormented? The fifth seal we went through hell. But under the fifth trumpet, they went through hell. And we didn't. We was the locust command not to hurt us. It had the seal of God. And the fifth thing to put out, his bowl of wrath upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was feet was full of darkness. And they grouped their tongues for pain. People sold out Jesus to have food to eat. Now darkness has filled the Antichrist kingdom. Rome. You're going to find out on in here? Rome before I get to Rome. Let's stay if we get through the Rome! Rome! The great horror! 
the last of God's kindness. This ain't going to stop as I change angels. It's still going on. See, is he, he just let me know that all seven's going now. I'm telling you what's going to happen. Full of darkness, they group their tongues with pain. Blaspheme the man. Blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pain and their sores and repented not of the deeds. The sixth angel poured out his bowl of wrath upon the great river. You break east and the river that was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. I saw three unclean strips like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. Under now, John has not mentioned the false prophet. That's what these preachers on TV is doing. Their mouths have got spirits. You can't see them spirits, but it's coming out. You feel them spirits. Them spirits. False religion, the false prophet here. It's the false church. That's my belief about it. The false church. The false baptism. The pagan Sabbath. Man made his own commandments. Today the church has got their own rules. Not God. God didn't set up a bunch of rules for the other church. A bunch of do's and don'ts. He gave them the Ten Commandments. Man did the to have to worry about all this other stuff. One God. They're not one God the Old Testament, three in the New. That conflicts with God. God has to kill itself now such a thing. Because he destroyed nations that had more than one God. God is one God and you're not changed. Well, they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth to the kings of the earth and out the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that walks and keeps his garment lest he walk naked and they see his shame. It's coming at yet, but he's yet warning that the, the resurrection is getting close now. See, we're almost there. But he's still telling those that's getting saved, those that just got saved here in the 14th chapter, there was a great, the everlasting gospel preached. Many was not sealed. How about that then? They had to walk. See, in the 7th chapter, there was a quick sealing. Now, in the 14th chapter, getting the table of the everlasting gospel preached to the earth. Many is going to be saved. And they are going to have to do like we did. Even though it's tribulation, the beast, they're going to have to be overcomers too. The man re refuses as a sinner not to take the mark of the beast and get saved. He gets saved. He comes to the light of the gospel. The everlasting gospel is preached to him. Called immediately the angel came forth preaching the everlasting gospel to the, the whole earth. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air. Lord, help me. How many notes already? You can see the sign of that. Let me know right now something's happening in the heavens. I fully believe the angels is already working on this. The old zones, the whole world right now is being. Look what old Saddam done to the air. He changed the whole weather pattern. Why is it droughts? Into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. I've turned to lose waste of my wrath now, and the wrath has just begun again. The holy wrath of God, my seven angels. And there were voices and thunders and light, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great, it's all started all over again, see. 
He got it all loose now, and everything's going to start happening. More earthquakes. You done had earthquakes in the islands and mountains, and the sun's turned black under these others in the sixth seal. Now here it goes again. The great city was divided in three parts. And probably this will be wrong. Because that's a mother, that's a that's a demon. Rome, I believe it's Rome. Because Rome is going to be hit, but not by itself. Rome, the mother of the false prophet, the mother of false religion, the mother of all Trinity religion, all Valentine religion, all Santa Claus religion, all Easter religion, all Sunday pagan Sabbath. Mother of the three gods. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. God ain't no God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. God is one. Now Rome has been destroyed the mother. And you're going to see as I move over into the next chapter that Rome is going to have the wrath of God. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierce of his wrath. That was the wine of the wine of the wrath, the full climax. Every island cut away and the mountains are not there. There fell upon men great hell out of heaven and ever ever sown about the weight of a hundred pounds. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hell for oh, the plague of God was exceeding great. There came one of the seven angels which had the seven bones talk to me seven and he come here and I'll show you the judgment of the great horror that set on many waters. Now the great horror, the mother of harlots, one of the seven angels, they're up through, they just turn all of God's wrath loose. But the wrath is still coming. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, false religions. Every time you worship in false religion, you commit fornication, certainly. The inhabitants of earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. People are drunk on the Trinity. People are drunk on this charismatic mass. They're drunk on this false religion today. They're not sober anymore. They're drunk. You can't preach the gospel to them. They won't endure sound doctrine. They won't hear the truth. They're intoxicated by the great horror. They're intoxicated by false rapture. They're intoxicated by breaking the commandments. They won't hear the commandments of God. They accuse me of taking you back to the law. But I don't care. Because this thing's out of hand now. God has done brought the revelation. The book of Revelation is being exposed and revealed to me. The book that nobody has been able to set up and interpret. I'm interpreting. The vision has made a mock out of it. The theologian has made a mock out of the book of Revelation. They made a mock out of John. But I'm speaking it like it is. Oh my God. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting upon the scarlet colored beast full of names of blaspheme heaven. Seven heads and ten horns. That was the Antichrist. The Antichrist, the whore, is going along. Has went along with it anyway. Back, back this thing which hat out of Nimrod, Babylonian, then these, these old Roman kings. You're going to see the old, the, the Antichrist is going to come out of these seven. These seven kings. And so nothing else but the horse to ride to these. That's right. 
پیچھے سمانا ہمیں بیٹھے نہیں تو ہم سوائیں گے ناؤ دیشوان ہے ہمیں 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 And upon her head was the name of written, Mystery, Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, the abomination of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the myrrh of the saints. So who else? Who, 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 who killed the saints? Go back to the first century. Who killed the saints? The Roman king. Nobody else. Nero was one of the worst, but the man that came before him, Nero, and all that followed him, didn't do anything but slaughter and slaughter until Constantine. 300 years. And then after the Catholic Church come into to power and authority, 1100, 1200, 1400, I've studied it all. Rome, 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 Rome. Kill Luther, Rome, kill Haas, Rome, Rome, Rome. Anything that conflict, anything that preach against them, they kill them. And now God said, I'm going to show you a mystery. Rome, the mother of hearts. She's saved now, and he's here back to loving her and fellowshipping her, drinking of the wine of her fornication. All of them are. I'm the man that's out here preaching against it. And I'm head. They hate me. They kiss the Pope. But the holy wrath of God now has been released, John said. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the myrrh of Jesus. And you've done it to me, you've done it unto me. And I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said to me, Wherefore did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carried her, which had the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pits and go into perdition. They that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written. The book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is, here is the mind which has wisdom, the seven heads of seven mountains. Which the woman says, if you go right where the Catholic Church is today, you see where the Pope lives, you see where the headquarters, you see what Rome is? Rome is the city of seven mountains. Seven hills, and the Catholic Church is setting on a hill right now. And this is where all your persecution, they, they kill the saints. There are seven kings, five are fallen. One is at the present time when John saw this, he is going back to now. At the time that he's writing this, they've already been eight, but the time he's seeing it, five have fallen. And one is he's, he's taking his mind back when he saw it, which is in the Sunday. Send it, send it. And he's taking us back to that. But at the time, the 92 are close by these right now. All seven have died. By 78, and one will last a little while. Which was the seventh. The sixth one died in 78. And then the seven. But the next one wasn't really meant to be a king. He was just a temporary. He wasn't one of the boogers. So he didn't live long. 
So he wasn't counting. Then the came two more. God killed one quick. His reign was about two years. I have all this information. I hope tomorrow night we can get all this other off of me. But I'm doing pretty good with it without my notes. Now, uh, seven kings, five are. One is, the other is yet. And I've got a good tape on this too already. And when he comes, he must be in a short space. And that was the one that didn't live long. He that, and the beast that was, and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and shall go into perdition. And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings as one hour with a beast. You know, all that's in the making right now, these Baltics. These Baltics was in on that. That's why they had to become free. Russia gave them the freedom that they, they recognized them. That's the Germany had to be one Germany. They're one of them. And God gave it all away. And next year, they didn't make it this year because they had all this trouble. But next year, they signed the United Nations of Europe, which would be these 11 packs, 10 packs. We're going to get ready. This thing's winding up. It's late. I said it's late. These have one mind to give the power and strength unto the beast. Satan. The beast. Everybody's going to give the power to the devil. The beast, the evil. They come out of hell. Thus, these shall make war with the Lamb. The Lamb shall overcome them, for he's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And again here, John is not talking about it at the very present. Because it is going to happen just before he's going to put everything down. And he's going to overcome, but it's still a while. We're almost ready for the resurrection. The three and a half years is nearly up, but it still ain't hard over at the end of the three and a half years when he puts down the Antichrist kingdom. And all of this, getting close. Listen. But he's a king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And he said unto me, the waters which you saw were the horse set are people, multitudes, nations, languages, nationalities. The ten horns which you saw upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate, naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. There'll be a day that God is going to turn everything against. Rome because she's given false religion. They're going to see false religion in the world. And when folks wake up and realize that